Welcome back. You're watching the INET NBL Championship season live here from the swamp in Townsville. Crocs, four-point lead over the visiting Perth Wildcats. As I've mentioned, if you just joined us, Wildcats' first five games on the road this year. It and is. see that as an opportunity to jump ahead of the competition. It is. It's a tough one when you've got so many road games, but they got it off in spectacular, the start of their season in spectacular fashion last week when they defeated the NBL defending champions, two-time defending champions, I might add, the New Zealand Breakers. And they didn't just beat them. They, they really gave them a touch-up. They handed them their hat. Or, as you said earlier in the week, in the opening, they got their pants pulled down. <laughs> Rob Beveridge just made a slight change here. Sean Reddish not starting the second half, so perhaps he was uh, also not overly thrilled with some of the loose passing going on for Sean Reddish. Jesse Wagstaff gets the nod. Lish, catch and shoot, did not hesitate. Wagstaff comes up with the loose ball. Wildcats just keep coming at you offensively. They're doing, they're doing a very good job on the glass. Little travel there by Devin What do you so, think about that swap point? The trademark of the first half for the Wildcats continues. The turnover gets things going. Here yeah, in the third. Yeah, you know, once again, for as many turnovers as they made, not one of them shaking their head or looking at his teammate funny. They just keep playing. Irvin and Damian Martin. They got a little battle going. Ben Allen. He's playing so much more confident. He's got to stay out of foul trouble. You saw that there with the execution in the half court. Townsville got into a little set, ran their play, and got Ben Allen a, a, a pretty decent look. Irvin in the front court. Martin just out of bounds. This is a very awkward looking fast break. Gary Irvin there just upset with his decision making in that transition. Probably should have let it go a little earlier. Quick inbound to Hinder. Russell Hinder off the mark outside the three-point line. Pass. Matthew Knight can't come up with it, just bobbled that good pass. Now I'm looking for Rusty Hinder on the mismatch. Mark does a good job sealing him off. Blanchfield, just a strong drive, just exploded on the baseline. And did the right thing to use the board there. He was off balance and floating, so rather than take it, make it into a touch shot, he just threw it off the backboard. Smart play. Knight going strong to the basket, puts it up nice and soft. A little strong drive, get another look at it. Fakes the pass. Ben Allen just kind of caught napping, really, at his legs just straight, just walking out to the man with the ball. And those knees, big fella. Foul's becoming a bit of an issue for the towns with Croc. Ben Allen's got the three, and Todd Blanchfield's also got three. Tipped in by Wagstaff. Just sneaks in from Larry Abney. That's inexcusable off the free throw. Russell Hinder lines up that three ball that's just short. A technical foul. Being called on Russell Hinder, I believe it is. Go back, go back. Technical foul. Yes. Okay. So we, okay. What we got is the first goal on him, but that would have been a side ball anyway. So you have two shots and sideline the third. Yeah. Technical foul. Hinder. No. We're trying to. There's a turnaround. Doesn't matter. The first foul is on Toby. It's two on number eleven for pushing. Number ten. 
So Toby had the first foul on the rebounding contest. He was followed up by Russell Hinder with a technical foul. So the technical foul. Overrules or outweighs, for want of a better word, or I don't know how to technically describe it. I'm not sure to listen to what he's saying to Russell Hinder about the technical foul. No, it's over. And that sent Lish to the line for two for Perth, so big turnaround for the Perth Wildcats. And Russell Hinder, he got that technical foul, he, he yelled out a profanity, but not to the officials or anything, he was just upset at himself for missing the, for missing shot. the shot. So a little sensitive one there called by the officials. Usually on those circumstances, they might give a little warning. Sportsman-like foul call on Jesse Wagstar. Take a look at it. We saw a couple of these called the other night. That's a little unlucky. Yeah, he got a lot of ball. It's uh, no doubting foul. Definitely a foul. But to say that it's an unsportsman-like, he wasn't making any Let's listen. Sort of let's listen. It's not a breakaway, he's calling it a half. Just going up there. I know, I know. So the only interpretation that's made that the referee has made there that I think is justified is that he thought that it was putting the player in some sort of danger. But I didn't see that at all. I think that was just a, a little overreaction on that one. Yeah, it's a, that's a good foul, because when you foul somebody, I mean, you play for the ball, but you make sure they don't get their hands up to get a, a three-point play. Let's go. Play on the ball. Yeah, he got a lot. He got half of it. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, Let's go, Irving. Looking for Blanchfield. Abney with the jumper. Maybe not the one they want that early. Lish somehow comes up with it. Wasn't looking. Martin looking to turn the corner. Gary Irving's got pulled for the foul as well. We'll get another look at it. We'll get a good angle too. That is all ball. That is all ball. No doubt about that one. Martin's going to go to the line to shoot a couple. Again, to start this third period, not a whole lot of adjustments we've seen from what we saw during that second. There's no noticeable change in what either team's doing. It's just more of the same. Not as many turnovers, thank goodness. It's helped the Wildcats bring a little bit closer. Only trail by two. Now. Ball in the hands of Gary Urban. Hinder to Crawford. will step back on Damian Martin. That's good. And that's a good sign for Townsville. He can light up. Three of five from the field is Peter Crawford, seven points. And that's one of the big adjustments that the Crocs could look at is trying to find a way to get Peter Crawford some more shots. Wax down. Matthew Knight inside the three-point line, rattles one down. Back to a two-point game. Loose ball, Russell Hinder comes up with it, gets it to PC. Townsville run their half-court set. Crawford. He looks like he's going to try and get himself into the game. There, that was a, a little fourth shot. Larry Amney didn't have vision of the ball. Matthew Knight gets the opportunity but can't score. Good hands by, of course, Damian Martin. I'll tell you what, there's an even bigger problem for the cross. He's a bit Olympic. He looks hurt. Something running under his knee. Big blow. He has to leave the game. Wagstaff, nice little spin move on the baseline. We're all tied up at 46. 
Gary Irvin and Townsville trying to come up with some. Peter Crawford just forcing the action. Catching it on a curl cut. His foul will be out of bounds to the Crocs. Crawford limps to the baseline. There he is, noticeable limp. Yeah, he's hurt. His knee, I think it is. Going right to the locker room as well, so it's a concerning sign for the Crocs. Get Mitch Norton back into the game. Irvin to Norton gets that three ball. A little two three zone by the Perth Wildcats. Mitch Norton. Look at his stats in the QBL he played the last season. Average 13 points a game, but only shot it at 29%. So already tonight he's let it fly, but in the area of game that the young fella needs to work on. His technique looks fairly decent. I don't think it's really his role to get it going either. Have a look and have a crack. Red is still trying to get the score. Never bobbled it. Not sure what the complaint would be. Maybe they thought it might have been a little travel. I don't think it was a travel. Look, Dawkwood. Take a look. Oh, he traveled at the start. There's no travel at the end. A little shuffling in the feet at the start. But I don't think that's what the fans are upset about. He felt the contact, got into the shooting action. He's going to the foul line. It seems that simple. We're all tied up here at the swamp. We'll be back with more third quarter action. Okay, like, uh, you're the same side as, as Sean, is that what you want? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, and it let's, up let's here. have okay, yeah. you're in our one right. here, so let's have a look at a two-man game right now with you guys there. And if and when we go back to corner, slow down a bit and scream. Hey, the first time just run it normal too. Second time E, if you hit whoever hits me, come right hard off JT. JT, you gotta screen him. I right, let him go underneath. Tie the pick and try shit. Tie the pick and try shit. Yeah. For the Wildcats to start to get that intensity into their huddle, Peter Crawford makes his way. It's a good time out, I think, for, and we heard a little bit of Rob Beveridge there, and their offense has just been a little discombobulated so far, and just trying to get it on track, and, and, and the attention on setting some screens is also vital. You find that when things aren't going quite like they are, you just run the positions rather than going and setting a good hard pick and finding a man to help your teammate out. So, some real good advice in that timeout. Redditch off the mark for the first one. Still trying to break the deadlock. Same exact free throw on the second one. The veteran misses two. That's very often. It's North, run the point. Not a bad idea to have a look at a zone two for the Perth Wildcats because the Crocs only shooting at 38%. So the theory behind this, clog up the middle, keep them on the perimeter, see if they can make some perimeter shots, which they're struggling to do. Three of 14 also from the three-point line. Gary Irvin on a good pass from North. Like the the fact that he turned that one down, he missed a couple of long range shots, just mixing it up, draws the defense and finds a wide open Gary Irvin. Redditch backing it down, Cam Toby on the oak glass, gets it to Lish. Scramble ball by the Perth Wildcats on a good offensive rebound. Spot on, Steve. The defense was Sam throughout that half court offensive set, and you just give up a a relatively easy offensive rebound. Do a better job on the glass to the Crocs. Irvin trying to turn the corner. Jumps up in the air, nowhere to go. Gets a lucky break. Russell Hinder's got to let it go because the shot clock was winding down. Redditch gets it to Lish. They're so good at that. Redditch, of course, 
a very potent offensive player. Finds Lish wide open on the baseline. He sprays the three. Perth Wildcats for the last 10. Opening that lead up to 652 to 46. And just like that, you know how we were talking about it. They're so capable of just exploding for some quick points. That's exactly what's happened. Good instruction by Rod Beveridge. They are very content with the way this game is unfolding. And it's coming through the good service they're getting from Kevin Lish. Need to find him in that transition. One of those players, when he knocks down a couple, he becomes even more potent because he starts to look for it every single time. He's three of six from the three-point line, 17 points, six of 11 from the field. Is Kevin Lish, the reigning MVP. And his teammates do a good job of addressing when he's hot. Not just him, but anybody playing for that club. Cedar's way off the mark outside the three-point line. And again, things are going against the Crocs right now. She's really struggling for points on the board. Their last three or four attempts have all been three-pointers. Heavy, look close. Lish creating a little space. Offensive rebound again by Cam Toby. Truman keeping it alive, but it goes off oh, his boy. hand. Cam Toby just outstanding. He earned the praise of the coach in that last time out. A little bit of positive reinforcement. He goes straight back to it in another real good rebounding effort. Wait for Cedar to come off the screen. Truman gets him to take a wide angle. Offensive foul by Mitch Norton. This has been three or four minutes in some of the ugliest basketball we've seen for the Crocs in quite some time. There's Mitch Norton trying to make something out of nothing. It wasn't on. The drive wasn't on. Young fella just going in there and gets pinged. Full credit to the Perth Wildcats. Breaking up the efforts on the defensive end. Redditch on the rip through. Nice backdoor play, and that's the one that Sean Redditch was calling for. Drive from the wing, backdoor baseline. Eric Larry Abney. 17 footers, about 15 feet. Mark. They got the mismatch on the screen and roll. Redditch, skip pass, extra pass to Lish. Tries to find Truman. Football. You know, a lot of this can be caused, not trying to make excuses for the drops of what we've seen the last few minutes, but when you've only had two of your prime movers, Larry Abney and Gary Irving, for three or four practice sessions, it's one thing to learn your basic structure, your basic plays, your X's and O's, but when you're up against this fierce defensive pressure and you've got to make those adjustments on the fly, that's where you really need that time together as a group to understand how you're going to instinctive play off the ball. And that's when the offense breaks down. Even when you've been together for a while, the Wildcats are very good disrupting teams into getting them out of their stuff. And their offense seems to start further and further up. Good hustle from Larry Abney. Good kick ahead by North and a good finish by Michael Cedar. That'll get the crowd going. 
a good crowd at that. 3,766 fans coming out to support the Crocs here this afternoon. Warren lit. Warren tried to tip it in. Larry Abney with a heads up play. Just lost his balance, thought he was pushed, and just had to throw the ball off Sean Redditch's feet. And the Crocs get it back. Larry Abney just trying to provide some motivation here on the defensive end. We saw him diving on the floor of that last one that led to that transition basket. This time on the glass around the basket. So still trying to find ways to help his team out. Norton losing the ball. Matthew Knight got a piece of it the first time. Tried to get after it again. He's got to be aware. Nick Norton, you see that double team coming. And a lot, a lot of pressure on the ball. And there's the reach in by Matty Knight. Hardest thing for the little fellas out there when that double team comes. You don't have the size, it's hard to create some space. He's got to try and stay away from that sideline, give him a little bit more room because that sideline is one of the best defenders in the in the competition because that thing don't move. No. Every night. <laughs> That's a great defender every night. <laughs> Wildcats just get it in. Pressure by Townsville. Martin, the Reddish. Gets it tired. Good ball movement from the Perth Wildcats. Seven six point lead. Seven. Gary Irving slows it down for Townsville. Wildcats trying to extend the pressure through Damian Martin. Gary Irvin, that'll come up short. Had to shoot that one. Shot clock was running, running down. Gary Irvin came up way short. He is, and the Crocs now 3 of 19 from the three-point line. Damian Martin gets a good look on a design play for the three-pointer at the end of the third quarter. Perth Wildcats up seven, 57-50. Townsville Crocs trying to come up with something in a form of adjustments to try and get over the line here. Their first home game of the season, dropping one on the road to Cairns last week in round one of the INET NBL championship season for Wildcats on the road last week, as they will be for the first several weeks. In the first few minutes, Steve, I reckon are going to be critical in this fourth quarter. Although they only trail it by seven, the body language wasn't great by the Crocs as they went to that three-quarter time huddle, so they need a little something to get them going in these first couple of minutes. Could be critical to their prospects. Irvin with Martin all over him. Abney. Intensity is lifted by both teams. They'll hang on to the arm of Ben Allen. Matthew Knight picked up with that one. Baseline. Baseline. Yeah, baseline, Nick. Take another look. Hey, looks like that happens every possession. <laughs> it's big, big guys. Gary Irvin. The Cedar. Gets it back. I'm trying to find some holes in that Perth zone defense. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Townsville on the baseline out of bounds. Andrew, why is that such a difficult 
place to defend. Well, particularly when there's a screen like that, when you're underneath the basket and you just got to get that position, it's like trying when you, someone gets to the basket, if you're posted up, usually in the course of play, you're outside of the key, but if you post up right from there, you can get an entry pass to someone around near the basket. It's tough to stop. And we saw then even the little fella gets a little screen, and it wasn't a lot in it, but a quick pass, it's a short pass, provides that uh, easy opportunity, but really any sort of preparation and scouting reports, those types of plays are pretty rare at this level of competition. Redditch outside the three-point line, just inside the sideline. Check this foot. Work before he got that pass and delivered the three. Abney. That'll just go the other direction. Just a little out of control was Larry Abney there. Might have got stumbled a little bit. Here he is there. It doesn't see Matty Knight coming over. Terry McInnes. Okay, one of those ones. No calls. All goes to the Wildcats. Kevin Lynch, the only player for Perth Wildcats in double figures. He's got 19 points. In fact, two players in double figures. The other one being Michael Cedar. For the Crocs, he's got 11. Redditch still on the hot hand. Check that. That's because he's hot. Sean Redditch now up to 12 with back-to-back -back trifectas. You must have heard you talking about Lynch being the only one in double figures. Wildcats starting to take this game to another level. Ben Allen, triple team. He burps it up. Here comes Perth. Redditch. To Martin, extra pass to Everard Bartlett. That's a three. Perth Wildcats, three straight threes from downtown. And that takes their lead out to a big one, 66 to 52. Wildcats have scored the last nine on three straight pointers. We'll be back. Look, Gary, let's get into this. I want Rusty and Benny here, Mick and uh, PC right here. I want you right here. Whatever one you want, come up and get into it and attack. Attack the middle, you got shooters. Face, find each other. Attack to the middle and find it, all right? Go on, go on the left. Go on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on the center, Pastor Dog. Rusty comes in center. He dives, Benny lifts. Be okay. patient with it. If we got nothing, go to our weak side action. Hey, look, okay. every possession right now. Let's go. Let's go. What are you doing? Play out. Flat. A little flat. Long way to go. But uh, real good run to start this fourth period by the Perth Wildcats. And their three-point shooting has got a real boost in this second half. Eight of 20, 40%, which is very, very good. Into the halftime break, the Perth Wildcats had 13 turnovers. Well, they've done a great job. They've only got, only had three since then. So doing a real good job of taking care of the ball. Some quick passing, but that pressure results in a quick shot for Townsville. Well, they just can't put the ball in the hole. They've had some not bad looks. They're shooting it at 34%. Townsville again. Crawford, baseline, trying to find an angle to Michael Cedar. That's off the mark. Just again, another missed shot. The first half numbers if they can get it up the court. You know, you remember back to when the Crocs had Luke Shencher. They had that low post target. They could mix it up. Well, they've got some size in there, but as this season rolls on, they'd be hoping that Larry Abney can become that low post target because right now they don't have the ability just to throw it in. This, when things break down, just to throw it in someone down low and, and work off that. Ben Allen, as we mentioned, is getting better at it, but that's really not where he's most comfortable. And the same goes with, with Russell Hinder. So they're really missing that low post presence. 
that they can play off. And as such, they've been so reliant from the perimeter. They've had 51 shots in total. 20 of them have come from the three-point line, and they've only made three of 20. Wow. Not sure what... I'm not sure what Townsville's complaining about. I mean, hold him. He pulled his jersey as well. That's always a sign. That's automatic. Yeah, Russell Hinder knew what was going on too. He conceded very quickly. Whenever the referee sees the uniform being tucked like that, yeah. very hard to ignore. Yeah. I know. You know, and if you're going to complain to the refs on one, that's a no-brainer. And that just wears on him. Mark with those quick hands. Oh. Oh. They're like sharks. Look at that. That defense is relentless. Real good defense in the sense of good ball pressure. But on the flip side of that, it's easy to put up ball pressure when there's no motion in the half court, Steve. This gets it into Matthew Knight. Two big bodies going at it. That's done illegal. Hey, Gary Irvin and Greg Hyatt off the ball. A little push and shoving going on on the weak side. And Malikar is there. Those two guys just... Soft bet. Jeremiah Truman coming in for Matty Knight. Just one double check. Yes. It's actually 14. It's 14. 14 seconds. Martin open for a split second. Lish to Wagstaff. Back to Lish. Four seconds left on the shot clock. Wagstaff comes up short. On the rebound. Someone's on Gary Irvin. Be happy about that one. Just trying to do a little too much on the box out. Sixteen point lead. Crocs are gonna need everything to go right. And in fact they gonna need to really try and generate some turnovers and find some transition baskets because from what we've seen so far with their half-court offense. Been like pulling teeth. Crawford, that's the look they need. That rims out as well. Damian Martin on the glass. No reaction to Damian Martin. <laughs> gets hit in the head. Watch this. He'll go to the glass, grabs the board, gets hit in the head. <laughs> Not sure what Russell Hinder in game was complaining about there. It was pretty clear cut. I think it's just signs of frustration. In fact, I'm not sure that he was actually disputing that he had fouled, but just suggesting that perhaps similar action was going on down the other end without being called. High bounce now for Russell Hinder. Hasn't been a real pleasant night for him. He leaves with two points and five rebounds to his credit. Cedar trying to reach in on Lish. <laughs> there's, no, there's no surprise that Lish knew that they were in the bonus. And this is going to make the, the equation even harder now for the Crocs because they do need to get up and in and be real physical on the defensive end to try and cause some turnovers, but any slight errors that leads to foul is going to send a very good free throw shooting team to the free throw line. Martin picks oh, up no. the loose ball. This is a layup. That's about as much emotion as you'll see Damian Martin show. He rolled his eyes. That's the way he goes about his defense just being, well, I just have to pick up another steal. No, no. Crawford. 
dump defense coming from the other side. Higher pulls it in. Good strong rebound. Gets it to Lish. Going in play for himself. Nothing going on. This is just a Kevin Lish show. And almost gets it the ball. And he knocks it free. Once again, the effort by the Perth Wildcats. Probably not a great shot by Lish. No Tom, ball movement. Tom Blanchfield's got to be more caught aware when that's happening. Dribbling it down the floor as if no one's going to be around. There's a foul called on Jeremiah Truman. Steve, this has been an impressive second half by the Perth Wildcats, no doubt about that, but I look at their team and I get back to my point at the start of the game without the services of Neville, I think Luke Neville. Although his role only averaged just nine points a game last season was not necessarily an explosive one, it was a very valuable one, and it's going to be interesting to see how, over the course of the season, how they try and fill that void. And Jeremiah Truman is one of the ones that's going to have to try and step in and pick up some of that slack. Hang on, hang on. Happy birthday. Big seven foot of Luke Bowman. Neville. Jody Bowman, happy birthday. Currently over with the Indiana Pacers. hasn't been released as yet. I think that'd be a long shot to make it. But you know, those big seven two guys, I tell you, when you get a very specific role at that level, it's not beyond the realm's possibility that he could one day find up, find himself in the NBA. Like Mike Doliak for him. There's lots of seven footers in the NBA. They haven't had a whole lot of court time. Kind of give the check. Higher. That's good. Another three-pointer for the Perth Wildcats. Greg Higher is another one that played at Augusta State. Product of Western Australian basketball. Gary Irvin. The slides out of bounds. Really impressed with the the route that Greg Hire has taken to get to the NBL. At the start of last season, he was the last man who had to go through the virtually the start of the season to earn the last spot on the roster, work his way to the lineup. And now is a not just a big piece of player, he's a significant player on the Wildcats roster. And there he is. In there, another one of those players similar to Cam Toby, prepared to do the hard yards, do the, the dirty blue collar work. And you look at his resume, and his profile, you get the sense that he's had to earn everything that's been given to him, even his college career. He started off at Miles Community College and then went to Augusta State. I really wanted to play. Just a good example. You stick at it, you determine, you have that competitive streak that you work hard enough, good things can happen. Ben Allen down low. Good strong move. Can't get the finish. He got fouled, but they're the ones the big fellas got to make. 6 10, 6 11 around the basket. He's not an explosive athlete. He's not the sort of big man that's going to go up and dunk it with two hands in those types of plays, but just got to get better use of his body around the basket. Make those plays. Exactly. Get himself to the foul line. Good foul shooter. The leader picks up the offensive rebound. Towns will need a whole lot of that. Down 19. Irvin on the mismatch, trying to create some dribble penetration for Cedar. This three ball rims out.
English. The night. Good hands, good weak side rotation by the little man Gary Irving that time. It's a, a mid on it. Crawford. Toby on him. Old teammates. First got numbers. Lish misses the layup. Two minutes and 48 seconds remaining. It looks like both these teams have put the cue in the rack a little. Because this is some unattractive stuff. Sure is. The Townsville crowd shooting 30% from the field. Three of 22 outside the three-point line. 17 of 56 overall. And they've got the, they've also been given a, a real good touch-up on the glass. When you, you're not putting the ball in the hole, you've got to try and find a way to get some points and transition and second shots can sometimes help, but they've been out rebound 38 to 26. So Paul Walford. He's going to look at this game. It's going to be very, very hard for him to find too many positives out of it. Other than the fact that he's two new players, Gary Irving and Larry Abney, he'd be hoping are better off for the run. Yeah, like a training session. Crawford, a lot of banging going on in there. Well, thanks to the test. He'll get some score. Peter Crawford still noticeably limping. First intensity hasn't dropped on the defensive end of the floor, even though it's a 20 point game. Let's not forget that Townsville Crocs are playing without the services of Jacob Holmes. And he is, for his size, one of the better rebounders in the entire competition, not just this team. So that is a big blow. And there's Ben Allen finds his way to the basket. Good cut, good pass. Trying to achieve some small yep. victories at the end of the game. Ben Allen playing his college ball. I didn't see Jacob Holmes. Yep. The man Andrew Gaze was talking about. Rejuvenated his career coming here. But uh, as I mentioned, Allen playing his college ball at St. Mary's. Started, in fact, Steve, with University of Indiana. He went there and never got the opportunities then to transfer. Grew up playing in Victoria. Junior ranks with Diamond Valley. <laughs> Redditch. Squirts off the side of the rim. Norton quickly to Cedar. Hey, Martin coming over the top. Ooh. Get another look. Have a look at this. There it is. Ben Allen not is really unlucky not to be called for the the holding or the blocking foul there. Just hooked the defense and almost like a shepherd action. Hands up. One. Townsville, although they've struggled from the field, pretty good from the line. Cedar missed both of those. But they're still shooting it at 80%. Yep. Ticket number is 08 on the shot clock. Unorthodox as usual. Sean Redditch, that is where he lives. Just kissed it softly off the backboard. Redditch putting up those numbers. 14 points on four of seven shooting. 
so very efficient. Brendan T's into the game from the Gold Coast Blaze last year. Another young junior player. There he is. Good to see most of the Gold Coast Blaze teamers who made the finals last season. Most of their roster being picked up somewhere around the league. Got some shot clock issues. Not that it's really relevant right now. Comfortable 20-point lead. Cedar. Servin. Redditch in the passing lane. Wildcats with numbers. Barblet gets it to Redditch. He bobbles it and tips it back in. Nord trying to get out of that trap area. Cedar had a wide open Gary Irvin in the corner. He did. One of those ones you're better off passing, driving into the traffic, into the forest, and trying to make something out of that. Especially when you're down 22. Keep it as simple as possible. Redditch on a give and go. <laughs> was never going to miss that. Redditch is 16. Rob Beveridge extends his winning record over the Crocs. Now 11-2 in his career at the realm of the Wildcats against the Crocs. And that's it. That's all she wrote. Perth Wildcats start the season off with two wins on the road. Last week, a 20-point win over the New Zealand Breakers, the defending champions. And this week, two big and two strong for Townsville, 82 to 58. Impressive, as we've mentioned numerous times. First five games on the road for the Perth Wildcats. But boy, I tell you what, what an advantage they'll have over the league if they can pick up four or maybe even five of their first games on the road. And then when they hit that home slide, they are so tough back in Perth in front of their crowd out in Western Australia. So the Perth Wildcats getting it done once again. Townsville start the season off 0-2. Losing last week to the Cairns Taipans. And this week against Perth Wildcats who are trying to go one better and get themselves not only back into the championship series, but do one better and win the championship. The most winning franchise in the competition, the Perth Wildcats, been in the playoffs since 1988. Andrew Gaze with Kevin Lish, last year's MVP. Kevin, an outstanding start by you guys on the road. Two road wins, great way to start the season. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, first half they played well and, and we didn't uh, play our style of basketball, but, um, you know, fourth quarter hitting three threes in a row really helps. And you certainly got it going yourself as well. And uh, you got so many scoring options, but in that first half, at 13 turnovers, is it uh, uncharacteristic of the Wildcats? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm out there just throwing the ball all over the court, and, you know, I got to take care of that. That's kind of, uh, you know, get on my nerves a little bit. But, you know, we did some good things, and, and we hung in there. And this year, without the serves of the big fella, Luke Neville no longer with you guys. A, a little small lineup, but still uh, mobile, and you guys seem real willing to throw up the three ball. Yeah, we are, and, you know, we're making it now. I mean, we walked in the airport. The guy thought we were the soccer team coming in, so we are small, but but we gain rebound, and that helps a lot. And uh, what about the outlook? You've got the first five games on the road. You guys, that really galvanized the unit? It really does. I mean, it, it's great to get these um, uh, games on the road out of the way first, and then hopefully a new stadium then. Well, congratulations on a good first up win by the uh, second road win of the season by the Wildcats. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. Good on you. Back to you, Steve. All right. The polite assassin in Kevin Lish getting it done once again for the Perth Wildcats. We'll be back with more interviews right after this break. Hey, Rob. And they stay there.
Welcome back to the swamp here in Townsville. Perth Wildcats, a little too good for the Crocs this afternoon. But Ben Allen, even though you guys lost, it looks like you've really been working on your game in the offseason. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I went down to Ipswich and played in the in the QBL season there, and um, I think it's just given me a bit more confidence, you know, um, going up against some good opposition there, and I'm um, hopefully tra transferred into this league. What are some of the things that you worked on? I mean, what specifically did you do every day? It looks like you have more of an inside presence. Yeah, well, Shane Hill kind of grabbed me and said, look, I know you can shoot outside, but we need you inside as an inside presence. So I'm, I'm just rolling everything now. I'm sending picks in and trying to seal up inside, and I think it seems to be working for me. It just seems as if you're playing with just so much more confidence. Everybody, you were the talk of the preseason. Everybody's talking about the new Ben Allen. Have you trimmed down too? Uh, not so much, I don't think. I'm working hard in the weight room to try and put on a bit more sides if I'm going to be banging inside with the, a lot of the bigger guys like Matty Knight, who's a great defender as well. So guys like that, you really need to uh, really take it at their body and show. I've got a couple of charges today, but uh, hopefully that doesn't, that doesn't carry through. How about what's your game tonight? I know the Perth Wildcats, a very tough opponent. They play a lot of pressure defense. Got into foul trouble a little bit. But once Larry Abney and Gary Irvin are around for a little while, I'm sure you guys will have a little bit more continuity. Absolutely. And I think our second quarter showed how good we can be. Our second half, unfortunately, we dropped off with the defensive pressure and allowed them too many layups. And I think that's where we really let ourselves down. So but things to work on. And we got a tough doubleheader next week. So we're looking forward to that now. Well, it's going to be a pretty even competition. I would imagine you just can't get too down when you drop one or two. Yeah, exactly, especially with teams playing each other four teams at a time, so point spread is going to be very crucial, so you've got to play 40 minutes no matter what. All right, thanks, Ben. No worries, All right, we'll go over to Andrew Gaze because I think we're going to be busy here in the post game. Certainly are, Steve. Thanks very much. We've got the head coach, Rob Beveridge. You've got to be happy with uh, two road wins to start the season. Couldn't ask for any anything better. Oh, that's right. And, uh, you know, we got five to start the season, and I was hoping if we could get you know, three out of five, that puts us in a great position for the rest of the season. So two from two so far, so very happy. And in that first half, you would have had some nervous moments because uh, your boys, they were very willing to cough it up to the opposition. 13 turnovers in the first half. Yeah, that, we spoke about that half time, and it, it's unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. That's what we said. There was a lot of unforced errors. I don't mind turning it over through uh, risks and uh, getting pressured, but not, not the way we turned it over. So we addressed that at half time. And you, it seems like you did a really good job on the boards tonight. You know Luke Neville this season without the big seven-footer in there. You're making a, a, an extra conscious es effort on that area of the game? Yeah, well, we've got players uh, for, like Damian Martin and, uh, and Tovey and Wagstaff. They're just relentless on the, on the glass. And, and, yeah, we are a little bit small, but I think the style of game uh, d does work for us. And uh, we, we just continue plugging away against the bigs. One of the great stories of your team has been the improvement of Greg Hire. The start of last season, you're very lucky to, to make your roster, filled that last spot, but he's now become a pretty integral part of the lineup. You know, he's one of the hardest uh, working guys ever coached, and uh, he, he's always been that four man, a six foot five power forward. And, and uh, for him to play in this league, he's got to be able to develop the perimeter shot, and uh, he just has worked and worked and worked. And uh, tonight he put on a really nice performance shooting the ball. Five games to start the season on the road, primarily to give you a little bit extra time to get that new facility going. A brand new facility. Just tell us a little bit about it. Oh, it's going to be magnificent. and uh, We can hold up to 13,500 people and uh, the membership drive is going really well. And hopefully if, if we keep continuing to win, that we can uh, get a better following. And uh, we're aiming for 10,000 members. So hopefully everybody back in Perth get on board. Well, we're all hoping for that. We congratulate you on a fantastic start to the season, but uh, we expect that from the Perth Wildcats these days. So good on you, Bevo. Well done. Back to Steve Carfino.